Count yourself blessed. If you are still here and you have your family members still here, nobody passed away, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to knock on wood, but I'm just going to give God his praise and honor that he deserves for keeping us. What's up, my love bugs and love muffins? It's Mama Love and welcome back to my channel. And as y'all can see, this time I'm up in my bedroom because behind me I was folding some clothes and catching up with some laundry because basically... I was at my mom's house. I got back last night after we had left Jackson and went to church Sunday. I stayed over at my mama's and I was really, you know, just kicking it with her. And so I'm catching up on laundry. That's the reason why. So I'm up in my room and I just thought to myself, why don't I just go ahead and make this video since I keep getting asked this question concerning uh, Queen's quote unquote sold or soul type of thing. And uh, I was like, you know what? I wanted to talk on this last year, but it was so much going on last year and I really couldn't touch on this subject. But I, it's a tell story. It's gonna end up being a, a tell story because I never told y'all uh, the prophecy behind uh, Queen's success. Basically, that's how I'm gonna put it. The prophecy that was spoken over her life several times. So, um, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this video and tell y'all how it started so people can stop having those questions or assumptions in their head. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, and I'll stop having to try to explain myself on a comment. Not explaining myself, but explain the situation or what's going on. Um, basically, so... Um, to make a long story short, Queen is a miracle child. Now, I say that because of the fact that I wasn't going to have any children and didn't think that I could have any. Because every time that I had children, uh, while I was pregnant uh, before Queen, um, twice, and I had miscarriages. And I have a problem, a condition in my blood um, where I have to take blood thinners and um, I'm antiphospholipid. I have antiphospholipid syndrome, which causes me to uh, not have to, have to be on blood thinners or whatever. And when you're when you have that um, syndrome or whatever, it's very hard to birth kids. So all three of my kids are blessed. I'm gonna say that. And um, you um, tend to have a lot of miscarriages when you are on blood thinners. That happens. I have what you call. Um, Everybody has in their body a blood thinning agent. I know I told this to several people, but to my new subscribers that's just now coming along. Everyone has a blood thinning agent in their body. I don't have that. I don't have that agent in my body to thin my own. My blood does not thin by itself. And I have to have blood thinners to, you know, thin my blood. And I'm on those for a lifetime, you know. So, um... I discovered it when Queen was born. I uh, had a blood clot in my leg and the Lord kept me um, because um, I had lost my breath or whatever one day. And um, I don't know, I just started calling on Jesus. I don't know it was a miracle that he kept me that far all the way till I had Tina because then I caught another blood clot in my leg. And that time I went directly to the hospital. That's a whole nother different story I'm, I'm getting off into about how it came about. I'm just trying to explain, you know, um, how I wasn't supposed to have any children. God blessed me to have three children. Anyways, um, the third round is when it broke off and went into my lung when I had Terrell. And that's when they discovered, okay, she's got a history of these blood clots. We need to find out what's going on. And that's when they discovered I had antiphospholipid syndrome. So I'm on blood thinners for the rest of my life. So to have Queen, Tina and Terrell, like I said, is a blessing. But when I had Queen, like I said, I wasn't going to have any children. Um, her father and I both got these mysterious taps on our back. Y'all going to probably think I'm crazy when I tell y'all this, but I, I, I myself don't know what it is. I, all I know is he got a tap on his back and I had a tap on my back. And I looked, like I said, it was no one around, you know. 
and he had the same thing happen to him that same day and I was the witness that I never paid any attention to it I just thought well I don't know I, I had to be an angel or and then I thought well, maybe that was just a coincidence and I blew it off or whatever we talking back in 1993 94 um, and so I blew it off and um, I think it was maybe a three weeks later or something I found out I was pregnant with Queen I named Queen several times she was different names um I was naming her Nala I wanted to name her Nala because I was a Lion King fan that's when Lion King first came out I was pregnant with Queen when when Lion King came out so she was gonna be Nala <clears throat> she was gonna be a whole princess Nala that was gonna be her name and a whole bunch of other names I can't think of. I was trying to think of these pretty girly names for Queen. And my mother was like, name her after me. I ain't got, you know, nobody, none of my grandchildren named after me yet. So I thought, well, I'll name her Queen. And then I'll name her Naja, the middle name, Najee, her father. <clears throat> after a perfect name, you know, Queen Naja. And in the course of me carrying her and being pregnant with her, pregnant with her, whatever. Um, in the course of me carrying her, um, I was changing names. I still changed up. It wasn't going to be Queen Nigel. It was going to be something else, you know. And then my brother, you know, he was in the car with me. And he was like, no, don't change your name, Reva. She's going to be a star. So that was a confirmation what I had already had prior to giving her the name Queen Nigel. When I gave her uh, the name Queen Nigel, my brother, my brother was like, yeah, it sparked up. I said, yeah, her name is going to be Queen Nigel. And one day... One day, her name is going to be in lights. She's gonna, she's a star. I know she's a star. I'm, I knew I was carrying somebody that was special. And so my brother came along and confirmed it. And I didn't even tell my brother this. I was like, um, let's change your name. I think I th I'm gonna change it to like Nala or something like that. And he's like, no, no, don't change it. She a star. I said, why would you say that? You know, I said, he said, no, did I say something bad? I was like, no, you didn't, you know. It's just the fact that I said that already and you wasn't around me when I said it. So it was just confirmation, basically. So anyway, throughout the years, um, Queen started um, posing, posing for pictures at two years old. And I was like, oh, she's going to be a model, you know. And uh, I would just say pretty girl and she would just pose like, and she just always wanted a camera on her. She was always, you know, she'd always go in the bathroom and she would take her pon ponytail down and you know smash your hair down and it was all puffy down here she was just oh she was so cute and uh she would uh put on my lip gloss <laughs> and uh she would just try to you know dress up with her little church clothes on <laughs> but anyway i still didn't realize she could sing until she was four when she had harmonized with me and um so then I knew, I was like, okay, this, this girl's a star. She's good. She's a star. I, she's going to be a singer. I know it. I know what she's, I knew she was a star, but I didn't know what she was going to be until she opened her mouth and she sung. And so from that day forth, growing up, Queen would always sing. She was always singing. So this is what we get into the prophecy at y'all. This is why a lot of things people say, um, I'm saying this because a, a lot of people come in my comments all the time. They say it constantly. There were videos made about it. Like, how do you feel? You know, your daughter sold her so queen, you know, she's with the devil. She, she did, you know, blah, 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 you know. And, um, and I never spoke on it because I felt like, man, I just let them say what they're going to say. But I felt like now is the time to say something and speak up for the simple fact that I'm speaking up not just for queen, but for God himself. Because God spoke that prophecy over her life. She's where she's at today because of him. And a lot of people don't want to accept that. Especially some people in the church world don't want to accept it. Because they feel like she's not doing the will of God. You know, she's she's not singing Christian music. She's not singing gospel. She, that's not in the will of God. You know, a lot of people got their little, you know, thoughts on it and opinions on it or whatever. What she should sing and what she should. And even my, me, myself at the time. You know, but I'm going to get into that story later. But for right now, um, the prophecy that was spoken over Queen's life first when she was seven years old. And we were at a church in Ypsilanti. I believe it was Pastor Powell's church. A uh, prophet came in, a visiting prophet. His name was Prophet Elijah. I believe his, uh, he was African or something like that. I'm not sure. Haitian. But I remember him 
he preached a powerful message that night and he was walking um down the aisleways and he was just calling people out telling them what thus said the lord you know and so i was one of the ones that he called out that night and i was going through some things with my husband at the time and um he called me out he said you you come here and he stand out in the middle of the aisle so i got up and i stood out in the middle of the aisle and he was telling me what thus said the lord about my husband at the time and he was right on point uh about uh, him and then he also said he pointed at queen and was like is this your little girl and i said yes and he was like come here sweetheart he pulled her out in the middle of the aisleway and he had said this child is blessed and she's going to be a millionaire and you're not going to have to worry about nothing because a blessing is over your family's life that was at seven y'all so I went on, you know, uh, I started, uh, you know, having Queen, Queen sung a lot in church a lot. And she wasn't shy. She would go up there and she would get, grab that uh, microphone and she would just sing, you know. And um, I didn't know what direction to go. I just know this word was spoken because it was already confirmed with me at first and then my brother and then the prophet Elijah. The second time um, when Queen was um, 11 years old, she was, um, we were at a... I think a church festival and we were outside and this is my sister my my um she's my stepsister um me and her had the same father and her husband pastor uh foster at the time he came up to me because queen sung at that festival and he had handed me a bible and he put five no it was seven dollars he put inside the bible and he said I'm sowing this seed into her life because your daughter is a millionaire and that girl is going to sing and she's going to reach many people, but she is going to sing for the Lord and that the millionaire was over her life then. So he said, I'm putting this seven dollars in this Bible and I want you to hold on to it because I'm sowing this seed into her life. She's going, she's, she's a star. She's, she's going to be a millionaire. Wow, I'm thinking, okay. So, in, in between those periods of time, you know, Queen singing at different churches and everything like that. Um, the last time when she was 15 years old, we was in Walmart. That's our store. And Queen was singing, another man of God. Uh, Queen was singing in the aisleway. And um, a man of God walked around the corner from the other aisle, heard her singing. He said, who is that singing? And Queen was like, of course, me, you know. And um, he said, he looked at me, he said, you her mother? And I was like, yes, you know, like. And uh, he was, he, he said, you're, a, she's a millionaire. She is going to be a millionaire. I said, I know, I hear it all the time. By this time, you know, I'm here. I didn't heard it, you know what I'm saying? I know, I know, we just waiting for the manifestation. We just waiting for it to take place. We know, we know this. We know, I, without a shadow of a doubt, I know because I trust God and I believe God and I know when it's of God and I know when it's not of God because the way God sends confirmation and I constantly pray like, Lord, please do not let me think I'm right when I'm dead wrong. Allow me to know. I'm humble enough. I'm humble enough to accept that it's not you, you know. So if this is not a you, let me know. So I knew all through her life, I could just see the blessing and glow on her. And it's not that I'm putting her up here and Tina Terrell's not. It's not that. It's just the prophecy that was spoken over her life. So this is what I'm getting. So I'm giving the glory to God because this has happened. He, this was spoken and this has came to pass. And when he spoke this, it was like it started to take place. Um, you know, like I said, um, Queen was offered to go to American Idol. One of the friends of the family wanted to take my daughter to American Idol. And um, she, she went to South, that's when uh, America and I was in South Carolina. And um, she got shot down because um, she was very shy at the time. She wasn't ready, you know. And I had this friend of mine, he kept saying, you know, matter of fact, my ex-husband's uncle, um, Benny, he used to always say, she's not ready yet. She's not ready yet. Let her, she got to be that kid. Let her grow. Let her grow up. I said, but the prophecy was spoken. He was like, let her, let her, let her be a kid. Let her, don't, don't, you know, it's going to come, you know. And so I was like, well, I just don't want it to shoot her down because I'm studying telling her, you a star. You know you a star. And this was spoken over her life. 
So, um, the second time around, um, it was another, a friend of the family had, uh, called me up and I think, I don't know, Queen was 16. She had to be, no, she was, yeah, about 16 at the time. I had to go along because she was a minor and, um, they asked if they, uh, no, that, that was already, yeah, that was that time. The, no, I'm sorry, y'all. That was the first time I'm talking about. The second time is when American Idol came to Detroit. I'm talking, I'm thinking about the voice in Chicago because she was also taken to voice. She got called back there twice to sing or whatever, but we never heard anything back. So I was going all over with her, South Carolina, Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew that this was going to take effect. I knew that this was, you know, I was setting actually my faith into motion. And so the, the uh, third time with American Idol, um, when American Idol came to Detroit and she sung at Ford Field, she went far. She went far. But we knew that Queen was not going to make American Idol because at the time Pastor Hogan's had spoke over her life. He called her out and said that the Lord said that he was going to take you very far. You're going to go far in this. He did not say that she was not going to make it. But I can already tell the way he said it, it's not going to be through American Idol. The way it was spoken. He said, God was going to take you far. You're going to go very far in this competition. But God said, if you make his name great, he will make your name great. And that was spoken. I get chills, y'all, when I'm thinking about it. Because just being there and hearing it, it's reminding me. It's like all over again. I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. I'm, I'm thanking. Thank you, Jesus. And um, so... After we got home, man, we, you know, Queen and all of her, you know, her friends and everybody was discussing. It was like, you know, Queen, we don't think you're going to make that American Idol because he said that God was going to take you first. So I read, I, I look different into, read deep into things when people speak, especially when you're saying it's from God. Okay. And, um, so I was like, you're not going to go far in this. You're not going to go far. He's going to take you far in this competition, but it didn't say you would win. So don't expect to win. Um, Queen went as far as all the way to Hollywood week. She made it far in the competition. And her, she made it to, to where her face was on that camera. We saw her competition. We saw the songs that she sung. We saw her um, on stage in Hollywood week. And that's as far as they went. And they put a group of people in this room, group of people in that room. And Queen was one of those people that they, the group of people that they sent home. She said, this has got to be a mistake. This is, a, this is not supposed to be, you know. And so, yes, of course, everybody was heartbroken by it. Queen was heartbroken by it. And I kept telling Queen, and I said, don't give up. I remember Queen, um, she was in the car with me. It was just me and her. And um, I said, um, you know, she said, I don't just give up. I said, no, don't give up. You a star. She said, Mama, are you, you really think so? I said, Queen, I know so. I know who you are. I know what God showed me. I know, I know who you are, Queen. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. And um, so... Um, I said, as long, I said, just think, your face hit the big screen. You were on American Idol. People saw your competition. People saw you on Hollywood, on the stage singing during Hollywood week. Your face popped up on the camera, I mean, on the TV. And it may be an antenna blowout and it, your face came in and then it faded back out. But you don't stop right there because, like I said, it's a calling on your life, queen. And... You have to sing for the glory of God. Your voice is going, you're going to go far. You remember, remember the words. And it was one of the sisters, or not sisters, one of the mothers of our church um, came up to me. And she came up to Queen. And I remember her saying, her name is um, Mother, well, Sister Tony. Sister Tony had came up to us and um, she said, God said, if you make my name great, he's going to make your name great. God said, if you make his name great, he's going to make your name great. I said, Queen, that's confirmation for what you was already told. She was like, right, mama. So during, you know, like I said, the makeup, you know, fast forward it. You know, we never gave up the faith. We never gave up the faith. I knew who she was and I knew she was going to get there. So it was nothing but, you know, Sometimes God leads us down different pathways. We think it's always oh, going to go through American Idol. Always oh, going to go through the voice. Always oh, going to go through the church when um, she sings. It's going to be somebody there to discover her. I mean, I know she sung for Dietrich Haddon. And at the time, she thought that he could help her. Um, but, you know, when you're an artist, you, 
you basically for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So he heard her voice and said she had high range and well, she sounded good and everything, but he never got back with her, you know? So it was like, well, maybe that's not that route, you know? But in God's timing, it was, you know? So what happened was, um, when Queen started YouTube, already, we, we kept saying, even my ex-husband, he said years ago, but it wasn't the time. He said, put her on YouTube. Put her on YouTube. We were saying this when Queen was uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. Put her on YouTube. Put her on YouTube. You know people get on get on YouTube, they get discovered. We was like, yeah, you know, we never did it. But by way of YouTube, Queen was found. Okay? And um, I said, Queen, you're doing a lot of, you know, uh, challenges and pranks and everything and whatever you do on your channel. With Chris, I was like, you should start singing. Like, get your own channel and sing because they never heard you sing. Queen, this may be the way. You got It's got to come to pass. I believe it. So what happened, y'all? It happened before y'all eyes. So this is where y'all on with me. This is on where y'all come in, right here, where I say get on YouTube. Y'all saw it happen with y'all own eyes from that point. I just brought y'all all the way back from when y'all wasn't in the picture, and I'm telling y'all what happened. So now, she's on with YouTube, okay? And the people that she run into in her life was meant to be, was meant to be there for that time and for that season. Now, I'm not going to go into who she with or who she was with, but for the people that were there and the people that are there now, it's a, it was a re, it's a reason. So to carry her on to, to our season, you don't know who God's going to use y'all. We can't say, well, that ain't going to be that person because God sent a buzzard. God has sent a buzzard. You know what I'm saying? To feed you. He'll use whoever he want to use. And that's what we need to understand. And I have had a lot of people come to me, even in the church, and would say to me, well, we really got to pray for Queen because Queen is out the church now. And I said, excuse me, but just because my daughter, you feel like is out the church because she's over here singing and you don't feel like it's, it's, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And like God ain't, ain't going to turn that around. But your daughter, just because your daughter's sitting in the church and she sleeping with whoever and doing whatever she doing she ain't saved you mean to tell me she's there because she in church every sunday no it's no difference god has no respect to person so you can't judge my daughter because she out here and she's singing and and, and this is what the problem in, had came in like last year it was a mixture of you know i was this controlling mother and i didn't want queen to live her life and i was choosing and picking who she was with and all of that it got all misconstrued and, 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 and um, confused. And that's not what it was. It was the fact that I know the prophecy that was spoken over her life. And I was just trying to guide her that way because I know for myself and she knows. And, and, and saints of God on here, you as Christians, y'all know that the Lord is coming back soon. He's coming back, y'all. He's coming back soon. And so I, I thought that, you know, I would stir her, you know, and like, you know, but you can't force nobody. They got to come on their own. I said, Queen. Don't forget, you're supposed to, you got to win these souls. You got to win them over for God. You have to, you got to sing for, the, your voice is a, has anointing in it and it's going to reach many people, you know. And she was saying, mama, you know, I was singing from my experiences, from my past hurts, from everything that I, that I went through. Queen writes her own music. No one writes Queen's music. You know, Queen has always written her own music. She's always had a notebook pads around the house. And, and I would pick them up and it, it, it would be uh, nothing but poetry, nothing but songs. And she would sing. All she would do was sing and write. Write all the time. This is all the time. So, I mean, for this to be spoken, you know, over her life and this to take place, we can't always say her life is stirred in the wrong direction. Because that's what I was saying, you know. And I was making a mistake doing that. When I should step back and let God, if God brought her this far, he going to carry her the rest of the way. And it, and it ain't for me as a mother, you know, I have the right to worry about mine. I have the word, a right to worry about my children, but I, I have no right after she's grown and she's making her own decisions. And that's basically what it looked like I was doing, like I was hating or something like that. But I was just being real careful. Like, look, Queen, every now and then, I'm always on the phone, Queen. I'll text her. The Lord coming back soon. Reel that on in now. You know. Um, I let her know because that's the right thing to do. That's how she was raised. You know, I don't pressure her on it. I don't badger her about it. I don't make her feel bad. I don't put her down. I just constantly remind her every now and then, not constantly, but like I'm bugging her. But every now and then I'm like, Queen, God's coming back. And she's like, I know, Mama. I know. I know. I'm a, you know, okay. So what you need to do is, you know, 
don't keep that in mind. I'm trying to keep that conscience going because I don't want mine lost. I don't want my children, any of my children lost. You know, I tell my, my kids the honest to God truth. And I feel like whoever raised that y'all raise y'all kids, the way y'all raise y'all kids, good for y'all. But don't tell me how to, you know, raise mine and what to say to mine. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about her soul. I'm concerned about uh, her obedience to God. And that's the only thing that, that uh, was bothering me. You know, I was like, you know, we, we kind of, you know, got to get this, y'all getting it all twisted and stuff like that. And it wasn't, it's not about no money. It's not about that. It's about the prophecies that were spoken over her life. And nobody ever knew about that. And so I wanted to get a chance to tell, you know, that side of it, the, the prophecies that were spoken. We can't, we got to watch what we say of calling people, you know, saying she, she sold her soul to the devil. Because what you're doing when you do that, you're lying on God. God spoke that prophecy over her life. And Queen knows where her, her, her self and soul was going to be. We all know when we um sell our soul and, and eternal damnation is not worth no money i don't care and queen knows this no amount of money in the world is worth your soul what is the profit of a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul it does not matter so when we we speak things like that because oh she ain't sold her soul now nah, she didn't know no you speaking blasphemy against god you need to watch that watch, watch what you're saying because god this is from the beginning so see that's what i'm saying if you don't know the whole story you shouldn't speak on it. But that's the story. Y'all got the story now. That's the other of the story. That's the other half of the story that y'all didn't know about the prophecy that was spoken on her life. So I just wanted to leave y'all with that. I just want to say that I know that uh, we, uh, we come to God on our own, you know. But there ain't nothing wrong with always showing that love and encouraging word, you know, in a loving way. You know, I do it in a loving way. I never, I don't do it in no harsh way. I do it in a loving way. I always queen, you know, the Lord coming back. I love you. You know, I want, I want all of us to make it. You know, God said I would that no man perish. You know, I want us all to make it in. You know, I don't want to see, I don't want to be left behind. But I don't want to look back and see none of my kids left behind either. And so I say it with love when I talk to her. I like, you know, queen, the Lord is coming back. You know. And um, the prophecy, he said, if you make his name great, he'll make your name great, you know. And I think God has fulfilled that, you know. And a lot of people are touched by her life, or her songs, may I say, because the songs that Queen writes um, are experiences, uh, past experiences of things she went through and things that young people go through so a lot of people can understand. Another thing, Queen ain't going to be liked. Queen's name is dragged across the Internet constantly. She's lied on. She's constant, continuously ridiculed. And as long as that, like I said, you are part of the, uh, uh, when you're on God's team, you're not going to be like being a Christian. A lot of people don't know why they don't like Queen. They don't like her because of her anointing. They don't like the light that's in her. They don't know that. That's the enemy in them that stirs them up, that talk about her, you know, to run her down. But as long as you got the name of Jesus Christ on your back and you a child of God, you are not going to be like, we are not going to be accepted. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And as long as she got the name of Jesus Christ on her, she's been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I just don't think nobody that, that, that's filled with the Holy Ghost and been baptized in Jesus' name can sell their soul to no devil in hell because you're going to get a conviction out of this world, you know. God never leaves us. God never leaves us. We leave him. And God said, you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. God is a God of love. He said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And so we have to be careful of what we say and speak over people's life. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I come against all of that in the name of Jesus. The things that are spoken and, 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 and the evil uh, witchcraft and tarot cards and all this, all this mess. I bind all that in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children's life. That no weapon formed against this family shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. No weapon formed. That we are covered. That the Lord will raise a standard against the enemy who tries to come against the work that he is called to do. His word shall go out and shall not return unto him void. But it's going to go out and do what it's said to do. And she's going to take that place. And I'm trusting God in that. Just like I trusted God and said, Lord, I hear you. I know I have the faith. What you told me is going to come to pass. 
She's she's a millionaire. She is. And uh, just like I had the faith in that that was gonna take that was gonna take place, I have the faith to know that God is gonna carry her the rest of the way, and she's gonna take that place for Him and Him and reach many. And many people are gonna be blessed. Many people are already blessed just by her spirit. You know, you got one little person, one little person that everybody reaching their hands out to trying to grab her and they had to put my baby in the air because all these hands is grabbing. Immediately I started praying. Immediately I started praying. Because that one little girl reached millions of people. And that says a lot. To me that sounds like a God that sits high and looks low. Sounds like God to me. You know, and, 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 uh, she, she would she didn't even take off yet. So how in the world could she have sold her soul? And she ain't, she ain't even took off yet, y'all. Y'all, what's about to take place? We need to be worrying and seeking our own soul salvation. What's about to come upon this earth and what's going to happen? We need to give our lives to God and worry about us. But I'm going to constantly continue warring minds and I'm going to pray for them and I'm going to love them. I'm going to always cover them in prayer. Not only mine, the saints' children. You know, I cover the ones, my love bugs and love muffins, they come on my channel. I'm going to love pray for me. I pray. I don't just tell you that. It was a post on uh, Facebook that said, you know, when black people say they, they I'm a praying for you. That's basically what they did right there. But I, 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 I know God is watching. So when God, when I say I'm gonna pray for you, I know when I get off that phone or when I stop reading that comment, the Lord looking like, is you gonna really do that? Like you said, that's on my mind. That's on my conscience. So yes, I do. I go right into prayer. If not, when I'm reading the comment, I start to pray. So we have to um. Hold fast to our faith and our and, and my trust in God. I believe him. I trust him. I know that everything's going to be all right. And I know that she is in a place where God is going to carry her. He's got her covered. And that no devil in hell is going to stop the plan of God. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video off. And I just want y'all to be blessed. I hope y'all enjoyed the story time. But um, this is the truth behind that prophecy. And a reason why everything that she goes through. You're not going to be loved and liked from the world. You're not. You're going to be hated. God said it. You know, your name. Y'all are going to be, y'all going to suffer for my name's sake. Y'all going to go through. And a lot of people putting her through don't even know that the devil is using them. They don't realize that you are being used by your daddy, the devil. Anybody who get on here and just, and just break down, tear somebody's character down and lie and defamate their character and destroy them for no reason at all. A person has never done nothing to you, have not even met them and you can do this. That ain't nobody but the devil. The spirit of the devil. And God's gonna, God's gonna prevail. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna take charge of that. He's gonna cover his and every foul word that was ever spoken against the children of God you have it you can be held accountable for it. simple as that you know but like i said i'm gonna go ahead and end this video out i hope you enjoyed this peace out in jesus name be blessed